Welcome to the new Mops Plus video tutorial series. I'm Henry Foster, also known as Toadstorm, and I'm the developer of Mops and Mops Plus. These videos are meant to show off what the new Mops Plus nodes can do for you and to explain how to use them in production. If you're brand new to Mops in general, you might be wondering what the deal is behind the whole system. Mops is a free open source toolkit for motion design and animation in Houdini. It's built to take complex mathematical operations like translations, rotations, and pivot adjustments and abstract them into simple systems that can be animated gesturally with just a few keyframes. That core system can be used to create all kinds of complex behaviors from just a few conceptually simple nodes. Mops also includes several higher level tools to help solve common motion design problems, such as adjusting the timing of instance animations or moving objects along a path. They can easily be used to drive all kinds of other nodes in Houdini, since almost everything Mops is doing writes back to common attributes used everywhere in Houdini. If you want to learn more about the open source Mops system as a whole, there's a very detailed presentation from the May 2020 Houdini Hive that explains what problems Mops is intended to solve, and it includes a few examples of different use cases for Mops. Mops Plus is a commercial add-on to the open source Mops package. It adds a number of new SOPs and object level tools, and it also expands the reach of Mops into DOPS, the simulation nodes in Houdini. This allows you to use familiar and easy to use controls to art direct simulations. Mops DOPS can generate forces in a number of different ways to manipulate bullet, vellum, or pop simulations interchangeably. Mops Plus is currently available as a two-tiered licensing model, a full Houdini effects license for those of you with Houdini effects, and a Houdini Indie license at a reduced price for those of you using Houdini Indie. The licenses are node-locked and permanent. An active subscription gives you access to updates whenever they're available. If you cancel your subscription, your licenses are still valid forever, you just won't be able to access updates released after your subscription expires. Mops and Mops Plus both come bundled with installation instructions, but sometimes it's easier to just see someone go through the process of downloading and installing, so I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of installing both Mops and Mops Plus. I'm using Windows for this demonstration, but the procedure is almost exactly the same in OS X or Linux. The only difference is where your Houdini packages directory lives. To run Mops Plus, first you need to install Mops. To do this, first you need to direct your web browser to github.com slash toadstorm slash mops. Once you get there, you're going to see this somewhat confusing screen. This is the landing page of Mops on GitHub. To actually download Mops, go to this green button here that says code, click it, and then go to download zip. This will download the master version of Mops, which is the most stable build. If you want to get more recent changes, you can hit this button here and set it to experimental. This is going to get some of the more recent changes to Mops that haven't been maybe thoroughly tested yet. Once you have this set up, you can again hit the green code button and then select download zip. If you're a more technical user and you don't mind getting dirty with the command line, you can install using the git command line directly. To do this, click the green code button again and copy the clone link. Then open up your git command line and type git clone and then paste the link. This will create a new directory called mops in whatever directory you're in and link it to the repository to make it easier to update later. From here, if you wanted to switch branches, such as to switch to the experimental branch, you can simply enter the MOPS directory, and you'll see that the word master appears there in parentheses, and then type git checkout, and then the name of the branch you want to switch to. This is going to be either experimental or master, or if you really like to live dangerously, Henry Dev. I'm going to switch to experimental. And now you'll see that you're set up to track the experimental branch. This will get you access to some newer updates, possibly some newer nodes, uh, features in general that I just haven't tested as much yet. Once you have MOPS extracted or copied somewhere, the next step is to activate the package. Navigate to the directory in which you extracted MOPS. I put mine in D, Projects, MOPS. And then look for a file called MOPS.json. Open this in a text editor. Inside, you're going to see an environment key named MOPS, and this is going to point by default to users Henry projects VFX mops. This is just an example. What you want to do is replace this with exactly what your mops installation directory was. So I'm going to copy this and then paste this here. The one thing that you need to watch out for is that in Windows, if you copy a path directly, it's going to use backslashes and JSON does not like backslashes. So I'm going to replace this with forward slashes and now we have the correct link. Then save this file. Next, you're going to take this package file you just saved and copy it, and then find your Houdini packages directory. This is going to be in documents and then in your Houdini folder. 
Inside here, there may or may not be a directory called packages. If there isn't a directory called packages, create it, go inside, and then paste the mops.json file in there. I'm not going to replace mine because I already have my own install configured. Once the JSON file is in there, you're good to go. To test the installation, just launch Houdini, make a SOP network, and then look for the mops folder in your tab menu. The other thing that you can do is go up top here to your shelf, go to the shelves tab here, and then look for something called mops. Loading the mops shelf gives you access to a very important little feature here, the mops updater, in addition to a few other tools that can help you out. The mops updater is an easy way for you to either upgrade your existing installation or switch between stable and experimental branches. You can use this to pick which branch you want to install and then use this to pick a specific build. Once you hit apply update, it's going to automatically download the installation from GitHub and then overwrite your existing install. If you're a big nerd and you prefer to update using the command line, the most important command to remember is git pull. If you do this, git will automatically fetch any updates made to the branch that you're tracking and then update your code to match. Now, this might not always work exactly the way you expect it to if you maybe accidentally change something in your mops installation. If this happens, the way that you can reset is by using the git reset command. Git reset two dashes hard, and this means that it's going to overwrite any changes that you've made instead of stashing them somewhere, and then just say origin. When you do this, it's going to completely wipe out your existing installation and replace it with clean code from the repository. Now that we have Mops fully installed and configured, it's time to install Mops Plus. If you haven't already purchased a Mops Plus license, here's how to do it. Point a web browser to motionoperators.com and then go to Mops Plus login. From here, you'll be taken to a sign-in page. If you haven't already created an account, create one. Then sign in. And from here, you'll be taken directly to the purchase manager. This is where you can buy new licenses. You can either pick an indie license or an effects license. They have the same license restrictions overall as Houdini's indie and effects versions. Once you have an account with a valid license, if you go to the download manager, you'll be shown first a change log, which is also available from the initial motion operators mops plus page. But you can view it here too to see what's most recently changed. And then you'll also have a list of either mops effects files or mops indie files, depending on which version you selected. The most recent build is always going to be at the top of each list. Remember, if you have an expired license, you're only going to see versions that were released within a year of your last subscription date. I'm going to go ahead and download the latest Mops effects version because I have an effects license. And I'm going to extract this somewhere on my hard drive. Now, one thing that I don't want to do is install it in exactly the same place as original Mops because remember, if I make some adjustments via Git, something unexpected happens, I want to make sure that I don't break one install by resetting the other. So I'm going to go to my original installation location, which is D projects. And over here, I have this mops directory that I just created for the mops install. I'm going to create a new directory here called mops plus, and then extract everything from this zip file I just opened in here. Once I've extracted mops plus, you're going to see that there's another JSON file here, and this is the mops plus package. You can figure this in exactly the same way as the mops package. I'm going to edit it in a text editor. And then I'm going to change this Mops Plus environment key with the installation path that I just created. So again, I'm going to copy and paste this. And then again, replace any backslashes if you're on Windows with forward slashes. Save the file. And then copy this to your packages directory from before. So documents, Houdini, packages, and then paste your link. Once the Mops Plus package is installed, the next step is to actually activate Mops Plus. To do this, open Houdini, and then look for a Mops Plus shelf. If you don't see it, you may have to go to the Shelves tab here and actually add it. I have it active already. On the Mops Plus shelf, you're going to see a button called Activate Mops. Now for me, when I click this, I've already activated, so it's going to give me a warning telling me that I'm going to overwrite the existing license if I do this. I'm just going to say OK. Now it's going to ask you for a list of credentials. It wants your account name, your password, and a license key. The account name and the password are the same as the account that you use on the MOPS website. So I'm just going to enter my credentials here. And now it wants a license key. So your license key is going to be under licenses on your MOPS account. 
you're going to see a license key for each license that you have, in addition to information about whether the subscription is active, if it's paused or not, when the next billing date is. And you have options here to either change the subscription. This would be if you wanted to upgrade from Indie to FX or downgrade from FX to Indie, or to just pause your subscription so that you won't be automatically billed in a year. I would recommend doing this over canceling your subscription, which is permanent and can't be revoked. Grab the entire license key and then copy this and then paste it into the license key window in the MOPS activator. If the activation worked, you're going to see a little thank you screen and it's actually going to print out where the license file was written to. It might be a good idea to make a backup of this for later. Now that that's done, all you need to do is restart Houdini And if the installation worked, if you hit tab, you should see a Mops Plus option immediately as soon as you start Houdini in the tab menu. If you want to learn more about what Mops does or how it works, there's a few places to get more information. The first place to look is the Mops Wiki. This contains descriptions and hints about every single node in Mops and Mops Plus, as well as several written tutorials explaining the various systems in Mops and how they all work together. Mops also has a Discord chat server. There's a great community here of both new and long-time MOPS users to help you debug and problem-solve your scenes. The MOPS Twitter feed is a great way to be informed of any MOPS or MOPS Plus updates. Anytime anything changes, I'll be posting it here. These are also posted on the MOPS Discord. If you like always being on the latest version of everything, this is the place to watch. Finally, there's the MOPS Forum. This is a great place to ask for help or to show off stuff you've made with MOPS. The advantage of this over Discord is that you can search the forums for past threads that might solve your problem, whereas Discord is a live chat and so it can be a little trickier to search through. Before I wrap this video, I want to reiterate that this is the first in a series of new video tutorials centered on the new Mops Plus nodes. Keep checking this YouTube channel, Twitter, or the Mops Discord server for new videos as they're released, and feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments about Mops or Mops Plus. Thanks for watching and see you again soon!